Great, so now that we have our model done, as you can see here, and uh, all the materials are created and assigned and everything's been cleaned up pretty well, uh, I'm going to now create a skeletal mesh so we can start building our skeleton and placing our joints. So to do that, you're gonna need to go into your plugins and make sure, type in skeletal, and make sure the skeletal mesh editing tools are loaded. That's gonna, once you load, it will make you restart the engine. And once you do that, you'll be able to right click on a static mesh and do convert to skeletal. Now, in this case, I uh, basically what I want to do when we create a skeleton, we could create new and I we will go over how to create new joints. But I think using the existing skeleton in this case is a good idea. And we can start with the mannequin skeleton. Uh, it's a simple biped. This is a simple biped. This should work out pretty well. And we can go ahead and do convert. That thumbnail worries me, but okay, now we're good. Cool. So it doesn't look like anything, but you can see our joints are in here. And let me make this bigger. So all of our joints are in here. And if we go to skeleton up here and edit skeleton, now you can see that we have our skeleton. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is select the pelvis and get this thing better placed. Um, you'll notice that if I start moving this, it uh, will only move that joint as if you're familiar with Maya, just using the insert key. So what you want to do if you want to move the whole hierarchy, which is what I want to do right now, is go down to the details under transform and do update children. Now you can move the whole thing. So I'm just going to place the pelvis and I'll go ahead and start with the legs. Uh, I'm going to delete the right side and I'll get rid of the IK bones as well. I don't need those. And uh, start on the left leg here. So I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to zero out the rotations uh, and make sure that my translates only have X right now. So zero out my rotations and make sure my translates are clean. Okay, cool. So now with that done, we can go and move this around. So I'm going to get in a better starting place, something like that. And I prefer to keep, uh, in order to keep the joint orients clean, I, I prefer to just do this. Um, you can see that it says it's lit wireframe. I've noticed a bug where the display changes. So it looks like lit, uh, but lit wireframe should actually give you this. That way we can kind of look at our loops here and see what we got. So if we, that looks about like the knee loop, I would think from the little pocket uh, of geometry that I see here. So I'm going to make that the knee and then I can do something similar for the foot. Um, I actually built this UE4 skeleton, so I do remember some things about it. Like one thing about why the rotations are the way they are is because the tool set in Maya actually, uh, you could you could fit the skeleton to the model and then you could actually build the rig cleanly in another pose. Um, so that's why the joint orients look bad and un unreal, but they are actually pretty clean if you had the Maya source. Um, I always, I don't think we need to do this anymore now that uh, with control rig, you know, we can do a bunch of stuff directly in here. But when I would make these in Maya, I'd always try to keep the foot pretty oriented to the, um, to the world. You can see it's not quite oriented to the world here, but uh, I don't want to mess too much with the mannequin. Um, so I'm just going to do this and let's go to most likely, yeah, it won't be. Front is not front because I think front is assuming uh, you're facing down X, but we're facing down Y. So right is front and front is left, if that makes sense. All right. Um, so now that this is done on this side, you can click on that and click on mirror. And if I check the joint orients, I can see that, you know, here X is going up, here X is going down. So it did mirror it according to the mannequin. Um, now let's sort out our spine. 
So spine one should probably be, actually, let me do the same thing. I'm going to go in here and clean these up. Where's my pelvis? Ooh, that one. Let's undo that and just do it on the pelvis without updating the children. And let's zero out these. Just trying to get back to a nice clean spot. Something like that. And again, you can see it says lit wireframe, but if I hit Alt 9, I can actually get it back to lit wireframe. All right. So now let's go ahead and that was probably a bit too overzealous with my rotation there. Maybe a little bit still too much. Okay. Again, let's go to front to go to the side. I'm going to move this down to the base of the neck, kind of center it, and then this will go kind of in that notch behind your ear where you can feel that bony bit. Um, usually is around around there, or if you picture a skull, kind of at the base of that skull. Go back to perspective and finish this out. So clavicle here. First, let's kind of get the rotations looking a little bit better. You can move things in world space. So I could scooch this back. I'll change it back to local. And here, let's go ahead and just zero all of these out again. Make sure that they are nice and clean. Now, the hand will have a rotation of negative 90 on it. And the reason that I do that is so that the Z axis, if you have an X, Y, Z rotate order, the Z axis is the axis X and Z get the most uh, rotation and Y gets the least. Uh, that is to prevent gimbal lock. Um, I was told that you could change the rotate order, but I don't see any settings in here to do so. So maybe that's in control rig, but in terms of the core skeleton, Z, you can see here Z is my back and forth and Y is my up and down. Um, and then you've got that here. So there we go. And I can bring this back a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit forward. It's interesting, these arms are kind of angled up. Let's go ahead and get our elbow. So you can see the little pocket of geometry right here for the elbow. And let's bring our hand back to about there. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. Fingers are always daunting because there's so damn many of them, but they're actually not too bad. They go pretty quick. But I always, every time I place them or skin them, I always have a some kind of anxiety just because there's a lot of things to do. But the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and select the second and third finger joints in each of these chains and just zero out the rotations and make sure that, interesting, it's not letting me do the zero on that. So I'll just make sure, oh wow, that didn't really work at all. Wait, did it? Okay, zero, zero, zero. All right, cool, it did. It just, some of them are negative zero and some of them are positive, but it looks like it did work. All right. So the thumb, the Z will be the axis of the bend. Let's go ahead here and this line, that's where we're going to kind of put this first joint. And we're also going to scooch this up. So 
When placing the fingers, I only uh, will use rotate Z and translate X. And I do tend to favor the tops of the knuckle um, rather than the mid, uh, only because you get some crisper um, knuckle deformations that way. Less bendy. Although in this cartoony character, I think bending uh, like softer knuckles would be fine. But uh, there you go. That one's done. Let's move on to the index. So first step is just to kind of get the rotations level. Um, this first joint in the chain, that doesn't matter if it's not clean because it's always going to be offset from the base, but it's the, the children joint I want to make sure are nice and clean. So let's put this up in the knuckle right about here. And I guess I'll go a little bit lower. It's kind of weird, like this finger actually has a bit of a, an upward turn at the end, but something like that. Straighten this one out and bring it to the knuckle. Can I see, <clears throat> let's see, oh, I was hoping I could maybe change it to like only show me selected joints, make it a little bit easier to place this if I could kind of hide all these other ones temporarily. Is there any, vis nah, it'd be cool to have some like uh, um, toggle visibility and I could like select the middle finger and then right click and say show only this or whatever. So it gets a little bit noisy trying to look with all these finger joints in the way. Okay, so this one just needs a little bit of a tweak. And this just needs to come back a little bit. Okay. But yeah, you can see this doesn't take too long. Especially when these fingers are nice and straight like this, uh, that kind of helps. I wonder if there's a joint display size as well. That would be kind of nice to have. I don't know. Oh, ooh, nice. That is way better. All right, I think that's pretty good, good enough anyway. So let's go ahead and select the clavicle and mirror that and that is the skeleton at least the mannequin skeleton done which i think we can start out with just this and get this working i think obviously it'd be really cool to get like a jaw joint in there and uh, at least a jaw joint and some maybe some joints on this um, on this tie and things like that but uh for now we'll call this done and uh, in the next video so go ahead and hit accept to to 
be complete with that, go ahead and save your work. And then the next video, we'll start skin weighting.